Now here's a mod I always knew I would get around to. However, with Waffle Dragon hamming it up for like a month now or so, I guess now is a good time as any to cover it. So, this one's for you, Waffle Dragon. But welcome everyone to my pets, the original version by Sonny Holic. I understand that this mod here is a bit on the older side in terms of, well, mods, so I will leave a link to an updated version of said mod for those who would like to view it. But for now, let's turn critters into something actually useful for once. And first things first, no crafting recipe has been altered for any of the critters, so the entire adoption mechanic should be still very familiar to you. That said, the changes are immediately apparent upon adoption itself, as pets have names now, strength levels, armor, health, some pet icon above the noggin, and more. In short, pets have levels and moods and abilities now. So, let's discuss. And let me make this simple for you. Every pet can reach a maximum level of six, and each and every one of them will have the same six common skills unlocked at each corresponding level. For example, at level 1, all pets have an inventory like Chester, but can also be commanded to gather nearby resources. They will pick up items off the ground like seeds or minerals, take things from the ground like carrots or mushrooms, and of course, gather the basics like berries, twigs, and grass from their respected sources. Not only that though, they will assist in both chopping trees and mining boulders. So geez, it looks like level 1 pets are already sounding very useful. But how do we actually go about leveling them up to see what else they can offer us? Well, I'll also try to keep this as simple as possible as well, as even I am unaware of the exact numbers at play. But basically, there are two ways to level up each pet, through feeding them, killing enemies with them, or of course a combination of the two. Every pet has a favorite food, and I am 99.9% .9 sure that it's just what you use to adopt them anyways, and feeding them whatever it is has a chance to give more what are called growth points. Each level has a certain growth point amount that must be reached in order for the pets to advance a level. And if you wish to see how close you are, then be sure to continuously pet your pet, as unfortunately, the numbers disappear very quickly. But by the by, you will know that you got growth points through combat if bright balls of light drop from the enemy when it dies. Trust me, it just looks and sounds more wonky than it actually is in-game. Just feed and kill. Easy enough. And now that you know that, let's fire through what unlocks at each level, that being the common skills. Come level 2, all pets give one sanity to the player every time they pet them. Plain and simple there, but also note that each level increases a pet's damage by 4 to a maximum of 24 damage overall, so that's good stuff too. Come level 3 now, the sanity restoration mechanics get quite the increase, as not only can you just continue to pet them for sanity, simply being near them now provides a positive sanity aura of 6.3 per minute, not bad at all. And one other general thing about leveling up, pets actually increase in size as they grow in levels too, and I mean aesthetically, but supposedly their inventories are meant to increase too, however I think that's a little bugged in this version. Now level 4 is where things get interesting but perhaps a bit too interesting for some people's likings. Whatever the case, once our health drops to less than 30% of our maximum, our pets have a chance to conjure an energy shield around us that negates all damage for a short period of time. And I get that we want pets to be more useful here, however since when did they go through magic training before any of our survivors did? But have fun along the way. And to continue with this magic pet theme, come level 5, pets will be able to use a healing spell on occasion that restores 10 health for us. And finally, come level 6, every pet is able to summon a teensy tiny little birch nutter thing to aid in combat, but only if their mood is high enough. So, 
It looks like we need to discuss how mood works, so let's do it. And honestly, it's even simpler than the level up system. Mood is indicated via the color of the pet icon above our pet's heads, and is impacted throughout how hungry your pet is, the food value of whatever it is you are feeding them, whether you use them often for gathering purposes, through combat, and more. Honestly, I just got mood high simply through food and combat alone when going for level ups anyways. So it seems that as long as you just stay on top of feeding, fighting, and resource gathering, you'll be golden. Oh, and just remember to use their favorite foods as often as you can because it does help tremendously along the way. And mood levels here determine whether or not our pets will use certain skills, both common or with their specific unique abilities. And let's talk about those, shall we? Kitty Kit has a unique ability in which when fed, it will offer a return gift to us. And as far as I can tell, it is mostly random. However, I did receive plenty of glow berries among the very rare gear, gold, and all that nonsense. I would probably think that thinking the gifting mechanics of cat coons would be wise when it comes to understanding all this. Kitty Kit can also critically hit, increasing their damage overall. You will know it when it happens, as the sound of gunpowder exploding will occur, a big puff of smoke will emit from below the mob, and of course, the damage numbers will be higher than normal. So, it looks like the kitty claws are out. But sadly, with recent changes to the fishing mechanics within the game, the other two abilities of Kitty Kit seem to be done broken. They're supposed to be able to not only fish with the player, but also make some sort of canned food with said fish, and my guess was that it was supposed to make them last longer. Unfortunate, but maybe the updated version has fixed all that for ya. So moving on, the Vargling only has two unique abilities, both pertaining to combat. Ice Tooth and Pure Soul. Ice Tooth gives all of his attacks freeze damage, and after several hits, the Vargling can completely freeze targets. Not bad, but Mood must be above 70 in order for it to come into play. The next ability of the Varglings has to do with Hounds specifically. When Mood is at least at 40 points, a dead hound has a chance to become a ghost version of itself, or like a younger version of itself, back when it was, as the ability alludes to, a pure soul. This little guy will also fight with ya until either dying in combat or running out of hunger. So have fun being the alpha of the pack. For the most part, all of Eulit's abilities boil down to one simple thing, putting mobs to sleep. As long as mood is above 40, Eulit has a chance to yawn every time the player is hit, and the yawn will put the hostile mob to sleep, as long as it isn't a big, big bad. On top of that, if mood is above 70, Eulit can just render the enemy asleep at will whenever they want without any damage taken. Pretty handy, actually. But do know that Eulit will not fight at all until your health drops below 50%. Until then, you're on your own. Giblet is next and is the same in that regard, actually. If you even use him in combat, that is. Other than that, though, Giblet is all about gobblers. With Giblet around, gobblers that spawn from berry bushes stick close to you instead of running around and stealing off the other bushes. Not only that, they don't even run away once you actually start to kill them, for Pete's sake. It's kind of funny, actually. But sadly, there is more that I could not show you here today. Apparently, there is an alpha gobbler that spawns when danger is around, but I could not get it to spawn, unfortunately. So, moving on to the broodling, our very own mini dragonfly. We can put food and logs within in order to instantly cook said food and turn said logs into charcoal. Very, very similar to how Fire Pack'em Bag'ems works within Don't Starve Shipwrecked, only, you know, all of our stuff is not just going to turn into ashes. And when it comes to combat, even though the Broodling will choose not to fight until our health drops below 50%, they will add fire damage to our attacks that deal an additional 20 points of damage overall. Just as long as Mood is above 70, however. So light em up. Speaking of, Glom Glom wraps us up today, and their Firefly ability allows them to emit a not-too-shabby light source come nightfall and it's permanent. This was obviously implemented before the Mothlane was added, but still, 
Neat stuff. Furthermore, Glom Glom adds ice attacks to our weapons that slightly increase damage overall, as well as leading to an eventual freeze of our enemies. Just think the opposite of the Broodling, pretty much. And finally, Glom Glom's final unique ability allows them to refresh the spoilage of any food within their inventory just as long as they are fed either a bowl of ice cream or a melon sickle. It's like Ice Chester on steroids, and I kind of dig it actually, especially as it's not the easiest thing to accomplish in the world. But there you have everyone, the original My Pet Mod by Sunny Holic. Be sure to give love to both the OG mod and the updated version, as I'm sure the latter offers some of what I was unable to show you here today. Two last notes though. Pets will not eat anything if their hunger is above 95%, which I really wouldn't worry about because I was able to feed them something every minute or so. But if they do get too hungry, they will go around and take and eat anything they find. So be very mindful there. But thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Thanks, Sonny. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.